You know, uh, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And I feel like, you know, God's going to do some gifts today, uh, right now. One of them is the gifts of healing. It works in different ways. And uh, God can work a miracle on the inside of us also. But if you have like pain in your body, I'm sensing two things really. This is interesting. <laughs> Here I go. You have, you have pain in your body in any way. Don't care what it is. Or here's how the Lord phrased it to me, daddy issues. Unresolved dad issues or daddy issues. I want you to come stand up here right now. Just stand right up here. The glory is moving. You might not make it up. Be careful. Move up to where we can all stand. Oh, guys. Make a line. Kind of like, you know, when you were in high school, you had to get in a line. There you go. So, there you go. These, they gave us vaccines when we were in school. We had to line up. Remember that? Hallelujah. Daddy issues. Pain in the body. That, anybody? Well, I'd not be embarrassed about anything. I had some daddy issues. Don't have many more because daddy's gone. But, you know, when you get to heaven and you see your daddy, all that stuff will be resolved anyway. Hallelujah. I'm just going to wait for a second. Because I like to, to see, you know, if we don't, if we don't, Heaven is never in, and heaven is never um, in a hurry. And the angels are here to minister today and help us today. So you might even feel the heat go through you. God is already touching people in the room. He's bringing healing in the room already. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. There it is, that anointing. In, in, uh, in the name of Jesus. Be healed. We got both issues. Be healed. Good job there, Normie. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> set him down easy. There you go. There's a nice chair for him. Just set him in the chair for a minute. There you go. Father, in Jesus' name, take away the pain. Take away the hurt, the pain. In the name of Jesus. Ah. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I'm about half drunk. Everybody say in the spirit. In the spirit. It's only 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. What is it? I don't know, 1030. Hallelujah. Ready to receive? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad. Receive in Jesus' name. Let that anointing flow into you. That a girl. That a girl. Take it. Okay, you know how to receive. You ready to receive? Yes. Okay. There it is. Ooh. Ah, hole. St stand her up. I see an angelic visitation coming to you at your house. Hallelujah. Something's going to, just be sensitive to that in Jesus' name. Maybe the bit of testimony or something. Father, in Jesus' name, take the pain out of the joints. In Jesus' name right now, let the power of God go into those joints. 
Yes. You ready? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Come on, guys. Ready? Okay. Daddy issues. Father, in the name of Jesus. Whoops! Don't hit, let them hit their heads too hard. Come here, Alexander. I'm going to hug you. You have a hard week. Give me a hug. It's okay, man. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray over him. Thank you, Lord, for him. His hard work, Lord. He do it in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath and let it all go. He's a big guy. Got to get a crane behind him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Put it up there. Let me see her. Where are you guys going? <laughs> you got to be careful with me. That's it. Oh, what you're doing there? Soak it up. Don't try it. It won't work. Don't get up yet. Don't get up. No. Yeah, just uh, wait there for a minute. Hallelujah. I'm surprised more people didn't come up for daddy issues. But you know what? That's okay. I'm not pushing anybody to do anything. My job is not to do that. My job is just to be here to pray. Call stuff out. Whoops. Joel to the rescue. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Let's just thank the Lord for a minute. Lord, we just love you. Had a new level of healing in your body in the name of Jesus. New level of healing and strength in your body in the name of Jesus. Even the doctors will be amazed in Jesus' name. New level of healing in your body in Jesus' name. Halamakusikikarasakotea. Mesingere. Shandorokushtiparaka. Because you see, in the day that you live, it is necessary for me to pour out my spirit to take care of my children because of the stress and strains of life that they find all around them. So therefore, I'm going to pour out the gifts that counter that. The gifts that counter that. The gifts that counter that. That cause people to stress. There'll be healing and deliverance for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Where's my help? Where's my help? See, I'm all alone over here. <laughs> when I move, usher's got to be room moving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, Lori, you have to excuse her. She's the town drunk. Uh, her and Susie and Lydia. I think Lydia is going to be the worst drunk. That's what I think, but that's okay. Hallelujah. You want to try to get up now? No. No. <laughs> okay, just lay there. It's all right. I don't care. I'll preach the whole day. I preach, I preach many messages with people on the floor, believe me. <laughs>
that's so funny? I don't know, but it was funny. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. E. Ah, ooh. E, ah, ooh. E, ah, e, oh. Bing, bang. Polly, what a bing, bang. Ah. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with your grandma? Uh, <laughs> she always act like that at church, I think so, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right. It is. She's one of the nicest people I ever met in my life. She's trying it. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> Look out. I, ah, ho. Oh. You ever hear that? One eyed, one horn flying, purple people eater. Boy, that's that's old. Ping, pang, bali, bali, ding, dang, or something. I don't know what it is. Who's doing the offering today? Okay. Jackie might get drunk if she if she can't do it. Uh, yeah, that's what we ought to have, seat belts on the chairs. All right, I get to follow that act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to be not probably as amusing. Uh, <laughs> it, it could be, but um, don't, don't hold your breath. Um, since last week, Pastor Tom went off on um, the topic of protection, the protection of God, um, I kind of went with that. Um, in... Malachi chapter 3, 8 through 11. Um, it's the one about don't rob God. Um, you, you rob him by holding back on your tithes and offerings. Uh, and uh, verse 11 says, it, as if you properly tithe and offer, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fa fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So that is God protecting you from the devourer. And I looked up the definition of rebuke. Um, in modern times, the dictionary definition is to express sharp disapproval or criticism. But the origin um, is re to, uh, to force back or down. And a buke year, I don't speak French, is to beat. Um, so it's originally used to describe cutting down wood. So God beats back or chops down the devourer, according to that verse. Um, and the devourer, you can eat quickly. Uh, you can destroy something completely. The, the devourer, like a <laughs> fire, devours a building. Or um, to be totally absorbed by a powerful feeling. So a person can be devoured by envy, greed, things like that. So God beats back all of those forms of devouring. Uh, so um, pretty much if you do things God, God's way, he'll take care of you. Um, if you choose not to, God will do this. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, do it your way. And I've done that um, a lot of times, even, even recently. Um, so um, I try to do things my way, and surprise, it turns into a horrible mess. Um, so um, God's way would have saved me tons of time, energy, money, and kept me away from the devourer. Um, but when you do things God's way, um, good things happen. I've got a financial example here. I don't know if you can see this. This is a bill that has do not pay stamped on it in huge red letters. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that I, I, yeah, I qualified apparently for some small business incentive that meant that I didn't have to pay for my license renewal for this year. I didn't know that. I was expecting this bill and it came stamped with these big red letters <laughs> and I had to look up what that meant. Like, why should I not pay this? Is my, is my license not being renewed? I was kind of concerned. Somebody's but no. Nope, God had my back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the you are that paying have devoured it. You just some don't of my stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're giving in person, uh, raise your hand. The ushers will hook you up with an envelope to throw your cash in. Otherwise, if you got a check, just toss that in the basket. I don't know if we have any new people. Your new people card can also go into the basket. Um, if you're online, there's a link for the PayPal slash Faith Alive Fellowship. Um, you can give that way. 
Uh, on our website, there's the yellow uh, donate button, faithalivefellowship.org. Go old school, send your checks to Faith Alive Fellowship, P.O. Box 605, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, 54235. And uh, as always, we've got the Pakistan box there. If you are uh, thus motivated and would like to reach out in a way that um, you usually aren't able to, to touch people that are way farther away than most people are able to, to give to, um, the box over there is a really handy resource. You can do it anonymously. God sees what you do in private. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we have no music today. So. Want me to sing? No. Oh, you, have, you have your own microphone. Pastor pe- Tom's going to sing I us want, a song. I want people to stay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. We got so many new people. Maybe some of them sing. I don't know. Um, new people song? Well, you want to sing? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. You want to sing a testimony? Let's do a testimony. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it. Gonna Who has a testimony? Go ahead. Yeah. So just a really cool, um, I guess you'd say, praise report. Um, earlier in the week, Scott was not feeling well, and he tested positive for COVID. And I was like, we are not, I'm not getting this. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with this. So anyways, I prayed over our household and you know we just prayed you know we rebuke sickness and god will drive sickness and disease far from our household it's not allowed to stay here and um gabe and i never had anything um and we live together so (laughs) you know it's like kind of amazing i feel like it's kind of amazing that we were just fine and scott got over things pretty quick actually and didn't have a it wasn't a big deal like the first time and it was just not a big deal kind of so yeah, but I didn't. I was just like, wow, thank you, Lord. We're we're just praise fine. Praise God for that. So praise yes. God. Amen. Anybody else got a quick testimony? I get a real quick one. Uh, last week, I went shopping with my friend Glenn over at Costco of all places in Green Bay, and uh, I forgot my wallet and the shopping cart, which of course was left outside, and I had like eighty bucks cash in it. I've done that. So. I just, Lord, I pray protection over my wallet right now. And then Glenn, full of doubt and unbelief, somebody took your wallet and you're never going to see any of that stuff again and la-di-da-di-da. And by this point, we're like four or five miles away to the next stop when I realized I don't have my wallet. So he drove back. I went into the customer service area. I'm Catherine Gosson. I I left my wallet behind. It was outside. And I checked the car. It's not there. She goes... Go see that person over there in the behind the fence. They've got it. Oh, so I went over there. Everything's intact. Yeah. Praise God. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, we've all done that kind of thing before. Yeah. All right. All right. So I got, a, I got a cool one. So about uh, two weeks ago, my business partner's wife ends up sending me a text. And she says, Brett's going to the hospital. And it ends up he has sepsis. And she asked for Ooh, prayer. And sepsis God. is... They caught it pretty late with him, uh, which is high mortality rate. Well, ask for prayer. I'm praying in tongues. Suddenly the word of God just comes up on me, and I end up sending a prophetic word. I speak it out. I pray it out. Within an hour, he went from turning to from uh, it looks like it was he was he was going to die. Within an hour, everything within his blood came back to normal. Uh, all praise and glory to God. He's home now, and he's going to make it. So I just uh, pray, praise and glory to God. Nick, how's the little one doing? Come on, you want to share that? Come on up. I want Nick to share that. that. That's that's a wonderful thing going on there. All right. Um, I'm really tired, so I apologize <laughs> if, if this doesn't come out right. But the idea is, my friend, what did she have? Uh, COPD, yeah. but she was on her deathbed, you know, spewing blood and all. Um, they said, well, we'll give her, you know, a couple days and whatnot. Well, prior to this, I'm from an old adage called AA, and she was my sponsor, or sponsee, and I beca- we somehow we became each other's sponsor. Beautiful. Because we have the Lord. The Lord is our sponsor. Yeah. No, well, he's our savior. But anyway, <laughs> it turned out that uh, this friend of mine um, always prayed the Our Father, because that was how we closed every meeting. You know? And uh, she, all she wanted was her family to be together. Well, they all came that day. The Lord, she, it was just like he was just waiting. And she just wanted that one last, wi- you know, wish. And I said to her daughter, I was like the, co- <laughs> the co-pilot to the 
to her, you know, it's like, okay, so now this is what you do, calling the place, <laughs> you know, I don't know, it was really the Lord, not me, because I, I, trust me, you don't want me on your team if it's football, but, um, <laughs> but we, I said, hey, do that our father, you know, get everybody together in a circle, this is how you do it, this is convention, and it's worked, you know, to a point, you know, and, uh, you know, the complete program is Jesus, he's the answer to all my addiction uh, problems, or your addiction <laughs> problems, if you've ever had them. But, um, but Sunni Trooper, they got together, they held hands. So the night, fast forward, the night they pronounced her, you know, they, they even got, she got the last rites, they pronounced, pretty much they wanted to pronounce her dead. And uh, about three days later, <laughs> she literally rose from the dead. <laughs> she said the, little, the guy was following her around with the last rites, she said. She goes, she was really annoyed, you know. She was like, <laughs> I, uh, I want to live, you know. I wanna live. <laughs> So, so we're like, hallelujah, we walk into her, it was like, and in fact, she was in hospice for so long, it was like, you know, a couple months, you know, it's been a few months, and we're like, this is really rare, you know, because we have gave her communion and prayed for her, but wow. she stood up, she literally stood up, sat up first, and then stood up, and greeted us at the door, and I mean, it was a holy reunion, it was like, oh my gosh, you're alive, That's you're awesome. alive, you know, and I mean, yeah, holy, I thank the Lord. Hey. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. Awesome. Well, I'm, you know, people are uh, sending prayer requests our way for, for reasons. This is a good one. Uh, I don't know how many days was ago, but uh, Lionel, uh, my wife's uh, nephew, son, he's four years old. Uh, he had a seizure, unconscious, went to the hospital, and the doctor told her, I don't know what's going on, not responsive, but still alive, everything. So they transferred to uh, Sina, uh, no, Sinai, yeah, everything, and five doctors were working on him. Next day, he woke up, but he couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. He couldn't knowledge. And the uh, next day, <laughs> he woke up, uh, started talking, couldn't hear it. The next day, took a bath. And last night, he walked out of the hospital. <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah, it was really was great the, to watch that. What an amazing part of this, all five doctors said, this should not happen. This should not happen. You know what I mean? He still has some stuff to work on, but the Lord's fixing him slowly by slowly. All the prayers you guys have in here with, with him. It was yeah. amazing. We were watching that. It was it was amazing to see the transform from an uh, coherent, waking his eye. I saw him playing. He's playing with his toys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You know what? That's that's uh, that's what, when people send us prayer requests. That's what happens. Our our prayer team gets on that man. Look out, because you're going to be immediately. An answer. Yes, immediately. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just thank the Lord. See, his mercy, he's good, and his mercy endures forever. No matter where you go, no matter where you at, he cares for us. Hallelujah. But, uh, Kathy, you just remind me of something that many, many, many years ago, I used to go to see my mother. She went to be with the Lord seven years ago, but back and forth. And then... What happened was in the plane going to at, at, from here to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Atlanta, Georgia, and then from there to Panama City. But somehow, not Minneapolis, it was Atlanta. You know how the bank gave you like a, it's like a wallet, but it's not a wallet. What do you, what's that? No, 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 no. It's something that you can put in there. It's a little well, bag. A little bag, something like that. Well, when you sit down, sometimes you get and look at everything is dead or something. Somehow, my bag had my passport, my visa, money, a lot of money, my papers from Panama, everything in there. It was very thick. Somehow, when I got up, it just went way down and dead. And I just didn't even know. So I heard my name in the, I don't know, what did they call? 
huh? And the speaker ended. And the, the, the plane, I was in one side, and sometimes you had to go to the other side. I mean, you gotta run, or you gotta get one of those little things, um, you know. Okay. So anyhow, I'm going like, and I go and see the lady in there that is helping, and I say, excuse me, is that name Stella Terry? Says, yes. Are you Stella Terry? Say, yes. You got to go all the way to the office because they got something for you. And I say, what about the plane? Just go, run. <laughs> so in the meantime, I just running, running, running. They got me everything. I had to go inside of the office because I got everything in there. In the meantime, I'm thinking, my plane is gone. But it wasn't. He took care of me. I ran so fast, and I was the last one. And I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, and all that. I even almost go and, and say thank you to the, to the captain because they don't wait for you. They just leave. But I just want to thank the Lord that he just cared for anything. That It was a very documents and things like that. How am I going to get back to come back and have my passport, Panama, everything in there? You go into another country, okay. honey, and if you go to another country, you have to have everything. Or they just either send you back or leave you there somehow. <laughs> but I want to thank the okay. Lord for that, that he is Hallelujah. so good and he's so powerful. I mean, he cared for little things. It was a big thing, okay. but anyhow, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the ability, the resources to give these tithes and offerings. Yes. Please, Lord, continue to look, look after us. Rebuke the devourer for our sake. And uh, we know that you'll keep all the promises in the Bible regarding tithing, giving, sowing, and reaping. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for our protection over our lives. And amen. amen. <laughs> all right. Do we have children to release to Children's Church? Let's do that. Get all psyched up for... Pastor Joel, <laughs> and here's Melissa. While they're doing that, we'll yeah. get ready for communion. Give them a hand clap as they yes. go. Yes. Not, we're not glad they're leaving, but we're glad they're... Yes. There you go. If I can add one thing with uh, Nick's, um, with their nephew, it was, they said that there was an infection in his blood and it went was going to his brain. Yeah. So, I a mean... A virus. A, a virus, yes. yeah. That. So, don't take... Take God's word as Amen. the last word. Amen. So, so all of that is because of the blood, right? Yeah. Um, I want to just have us take communion today for our country. Um, because as During worship, that was just ministered to me by the Lord. That, um, you know, we're uh, worthy to declare life over our country because of what Jesus did by the blood. This is holy ground because there's a whole bunch of temples of the Holy Ghost sitting in here. You are the body, the fullness of him. You have authority. So what we declare goes, amen? So we are to declare and to speak life over things that look bad, that look dead, that look hopeless, amen? And we're going to take communion today um, declaring that America shall be saved, that our republic shall be saved, that the enemy will not have the last word, that this election will be fair and just, that we will have things turned around and made right from 2020. Amen? We are not going to let the enemy have his way in our nation. Amen? And it's all by the covenant and the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus being broken for us. Hallelujah. So let's take the blood or the wafer, sorry, um, as a symbol of him being broken for us. Let's break the bread and receive it. And let's receive this that our nation is going to be made whole again in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the healing balm. We thank you for the name of Jesus to be uh, made high over the USA. And the blood, this all sealed by the blood of Jesus. He was worthy, and now we are worthy because of this. Hallelujah. So let's remember what he did and take this sealing, our uh, covenant that we have. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, 
for every good report from you, and we stand on it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll make sure we throw these away. Oh, Pastor Stella. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Melissa. How are you guys uh, doing today? Everybody all right? Um, you know, now we're going to do several things, and I want you to listen to me real quick. Uh, number one, I've got this letter from some guy that's writing me out of prison, and he wants a, 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 to have a uh, pal, pen pal. So any of you guys, I don't want it to be a girl because I know a lot of girls, I end up getting married to these guys. Um, but any of you guys would like to, to write to him, have a pen pal, he's a nice boy. Um, the only thing I ask is that you don't let him, like, con you out of stuff. I've done prison ministry for years. Some of them are pretty slick. Uh, but this is, uh, if you would like to do that, I don't want to do it. I've, I've, I've done this stuff for years. But it's an opportunity for somebody to minister to somebody. So if you do, I'll just leave it here and we'll, you can let me know. Secondarily, we're making up some hoodies and some T-shirts and some... <laughs> hats and they're cool they're going to be cool and they're working on it and they send us some uh, some cool uh what do you call those designs samples so I've, i think i got my i think i got what i want but what i'm going to have to do is get with them to or uh, melissa and me and or whoever uh to figure out how the best way to do this is as far as paying and all that and uh they're going to be nice and they're going to cost money. And you're going to have to reach down and buy them because a church alive is worth a drive. And we want, we want to advertise. And, you know, a good hoodie, I have them from 10 years ago, literally. I mean, you might have to pay more for a hoodie, but if it's a good one, they last you forever. Especially if you're like Stella and she takes really good care of them. Uh, but you can have hoodies, you can have uh, T-shirts, you can have hats. I, I don't know, do you do sweats? They yeah. do sweats. So, you know, there's a lot of ways you can go there. So I want you to start thinking about it. And they got a lot of different beautiful colors. They, I looked at their catalog and it's really beautiful. So we're going to bless them. Hallelujah. And everybody's going to get something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we'll, much more, more to come on that. All right, more to come on that. How many got your Bibles? Or your phones, whatever you use. Yeah, I'd like to see you guys all walking around with those. In fact, what we need to do is have a hoodie day where we all wear them, and I'm going to wear it, and we can all advertise, you know, and it's really, we, we're, we have some really cool ideas like this. Um, here's some ideas. He's got one that says, you know, on the sleeves, heal the sick, cast out devils. How many people do you see walking around Door County that have casting out devils on your <laughs> a church alive is worth a drive where we cast out devils? Well, we're so different that we thought we should show, show that. Not be embarrassed about it. Show what we're doing, right? So. Anyway, I just thought that was cool. Hallelujah. Yes, okay. We'll get to that in a little while. We'll get to that ordering process. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Go to Galatians chapter 5, we're, we're going to start, uh, do again, and of course, you know, because we had testimonies, I'll have to shorten, let me see here. What time is it, 11? Oh, okay. Uh, go to Galatians chapter 5. Now remember, we were talking about, how many remember, God is love? If we're going to walk in protection, we're going to have to walk in what? Love. God is love. If you walk in love, you'll walk in the Spirit. If you walk in love, you'll walk in holiness. If you walk in love, you will walk in the light, as He is in the light, right? All those things, if you walk in the light, you'll walk in love. So the main thing in the New Testament is to walk in love. In the Old Testament, they couldn't do it because they didn't have the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, we can do it because we do have the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost has been shed abroad in your heart if you're a Christian. You have to yield to it, but it's there. Learning to yield to the love of God is not the easiest thing in the world because you're used to not doing that. Your whole life is yielding to the flesh. 
So all of a sudden now you're going to be yielding to the Spirit. So you're going to have a few moments here and there where you're going to go, this ain't working very good for me. And if you have one of those moments, just say this, join the club. And we just, we straighten up and we get, go forward. You, you have to learn. There's no condemnation. We're learning, we're growing. God doesn't condemn. It's like a little kid, you know, sit there and go, well, you didn't take the trash out, Rock. You know, it's not like that. It's encouragement with God. Keep on keeping on, right? And so that's what we want to do. We want to keep on keeping on. But in Galatians chapter 5, we see a scripture in verse 22. Actually, let's... Let's just, yeah, let's just go to verse 22. I'm going to cut this short. It says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now I'm doing the New, New American Standard Bible. Everybody say, fruit of, the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is not love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Because God is love. That's why it's listed first. The fruit of the Spirit is agape. If we walk in agape, we'll have joy and peace, yeah. faithfulness. Yeah. Those will be the fruits that come out of that love walk. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the greatest things you can learn in spiritual warfare, and nobody ever mentions it. I don't hear anybody mentioning this. I don't know why. But one of the greatest things you, and tools we have is the fruits of the Spirit. You'll drive the devil absolutely bonkers if you have the fruits of the Spirit. When he's trying to make you unpatient and you're just patient and you're just yeah. sitting there, it drives him nuts. How many want to drive the devil nuts? It's fun yeah. to drive the devil nuts. Instead of him driving you nuts, you drive him nuts. When he's trying to pressure you, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. Just sit there and go, no. I remember Norval Hayes talking about this, the fruit of uh, patience. He said they used to walk, uh, walk up to doors and uh, witness <clears throat> and he'd knock on the door. And the second you knock on the door, you know, the devil's on your case. They aren't home. They're not coming. They're going to think you're a nut. They're going to think you're a Jehovah's Witness. First thing I always did when I did that kind of thing is I, when they opened the door, I said, I'm not a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Oh, okay. Diffuse a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Because they've been hit by the, how many of you ever been hit by the Mormons? Yeah. Or the, you know what I finally did for that? You know, the, the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormon? You know what I did? When they came into my yard, finally, I went out there, because I used to try to witness to them and stuff, and I got a different way of witnessing to them. You know how I witness to Mormons and, and Jehovah's Witness? I said, come on in, have some coffee. <laughs> no, we don't drink coffee. Well, you, drink, you didn't used to drink Coke, but you do now because you own the company. <laughs> they go, what? I go, check it out. It's true. <laughs> so right there, I got them going. I said, now you're, there, you're Jesus' disciples. Is that true? Yes, we are. How do you know that? And they're trying to take me down a path in their little path. I go, no, no. It's kind of like, um, what's that guy's name that annoys Dr. Fauci? Rand Paul. It's kind of, Rand Paul is a lawyer. Dr. Fauci is not. And Rand Paul puts that guy in a place that he can't get out of. He has him in a place right now to where when... Because he will not answer the question about his personal finances hooked up to this vaccine. So when it comes out where he's going to be forced to do that under oath, that might be an embarrassing moment for him. I tell you, those lawyers are slicker than snot on a doorknob. And you don't need a lawyer until you need one. And when you need one, get a good one, normally a Jewish one. Amen. That's right. What was I talking about? Okay, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, we'll back up to that. So I would sell them. You say you're a disciple. Do you ever, do you ever pray for anybody whose eyes were blind and, and, they, and they opened up? Have you ever prayed for anybody who, had, who was deaf? And I went right down the line. And they, you know, they can't answer that because they don't even understand what that's all about. I said, and then I said, well, last two weeks ago we had this, two weeks ago we had that, two weeks ago we had this. Do you have that in your church? And by that time, there's always an older one and a younger one. And the older one's trying to pull the younger one out, and the younger one wants to stay. 
So finally I got tired of that because and when they walk into my yard, I just say, hey, guys, write goat on mine and don't bug me no more. I am a goat. Seriously. As far as I, they're concerned, I'm a goat. As far as I'm concerned, they're false prophets. Okay. The joy is an example. The joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. That's powerful. This is why when we have church, we ought to have fun and get some joy. Some people look like they've been sucking pickles. I'll never forget the first time I ever sucked a green persimmon. You ever did that? Persimmons are good, but they got to be ripe. If you try to eat a persimmon, have you done that? Before it was ripe, it sucks all of the moisture out of your mouth. It's like freaks you out. Oh, it's the most horrible experience you ever had in your life. Yeah. Christians look like that. They look like they've been sucking yeah. green pickles, real sour ones, and they got a curtain rod up their rear. Oh. <laughs> they do. You go into some churches, it's like Rod City. Is that too, I guess that's pretty graphic. <laughs> I went into a church one time. This is the truth. I thought any second, because they hit, they hit that, that organ grind. And I thought, you know, any second, Bella Lugosi is going to walk out the side. You know, Dracula. I've never been to church. It all freaked me out. I went one time, I was all lit up. I was all lit up. I, had, I don't know what I was on, but I was on something. Nice and lit up. It was on a, a Christmas or Easter around there. And I went with my friend. She was lit up. She went to church there. And uh, we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, here comes these boys. Now, this is 1970-something. All these, little, these boys dressed in 90s with a candle. <laughs> And I go, this ain't the church for me. I'm, <laughs> might be the church for some folks, but not for me. That's all I knew about church. But you know, church ought to have some joy. Come on, everybody. I'm serious about this now. I'm not making fun. Well, actually, I am. But that, is, that kind of stuff, to me, is like a waste of time. We only have so much time. I'll see you guys driving all the way from Appleton. Something has to happen here. You got people coming from Shawano. Of course, they couldn't, they couldn't come this morning. We pray for them. But I'll tell you what, you drive all the way from Appleton to come to church to hear something better happen or you won't want to come back. But you keep coming back, and there's a reason people come back, because something happens here. And when you go into churches, something should happen. We had testimonies galore this morning. God is moving amongst us. These are bona fide things that are happening. Deliverances and healings and all kind of wild stuff. It's like the book of Acts around here half the time. It's getting better and better. Well, you got to have some joy. You know, I remember years ago, Stella and I would travel all over the place. And it was a time of great outpouring in the 90s in the, with the spirit of joy. In fact, it got so strong that they called Stella the joy lady. And sometimes they say, Stella, come up and lead us in laughter. And she'd come up and start laughing in the, in the flesh and start laughing. Next thing you know, everybody's all rolling on the ground laughing. And it was a move of God. It wasn't something we made up. It just was happening. And, and it was tremendous. It was some of the wildest things I've ever seen in my life. You ever see a, a woman that reminded you of a seal? <laughs> I've seen one, one woman over here stuck to the ground, but she clapped like a seal. With, with she clap her hands and her feet together. We used to have this one lady. In fact, I hate to, I almost don't want to say this because she might be watching. Her name is Allison. And Allison, we call her the holy snorter because when she laughed, she'd always snort. Do you ever hear anybody like that? She still does it. Now she's pastoring a church. She still snorts, though. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience 
Kindness. How many know kindness will get you a lot? If you're kind to people, you can turn things around. They can be, they can be mean to you, but if you're kind to them, you keep being kind to them, you, just, you know, all of a sudden they just, they can't do it no more. The meanness leads them. Yeah, it's true. Kind, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. You know, the Bible talks about faithful people. And you know, there's a, these, all these things coming out in, in a, about the church world. You know, America is at the low ebb ever for people who are Christians. That's a bunch of nonsense. We're, we're going to be in such a revival. Half the, half the nation is going to get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. It's nonsense to me. But they say this stuff, you know. And they say things like this. You know, gosh, uh, um, you know, you've got all these, these people that... I heard one preacher the other day, one of my spiritual fathers, and I love him, but he was talking about how it's really hard to get Christians involved today. I've never had a hard time getting Christians involved. Everybody in this church almost is involved doing something. Yeah. I mean, if I ask somebody to do something, they do it. I mean, there's a, there's a genuine spirit of wanting people or wanting to help. Be involved in something. Do something. I asked these guys about t-shirts. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. They were excited when I called them. I don't know why, but they were. Yeah, I could tell there's excitement in their voice. We want to do something for God. We'll do that. That's fun. You know, I mean, it's really a great witness. You know, sit down at a, at a Taco Bell with a wild t-shirt on, and just people will ask you questions. And that's an open door, and then you start talking to them. Cast out devils, what does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Last week, you should have seen what happened last week. You should have seen what happened this time. And you should have seen this one person or this person who got delivered. We got all kind of people, Satanists and witches and warlocks and, you know, half, people half crazy, people all the way crazy. We got a lot of different kind of people. And all these people got set free. You know? Yeah. Amen. People look at it because today, you know, they see it on the TV, but they think it's, you know, they're not sure whether it's real or not. Oh, say, yeah, it's real. You, you ought to come. Check it out. One might manifest in you. Okay, moving right along. So the fruit of the Spirit, is there, it's a great warfare thing. It is. And so it's also, though, all those things are connected to the love of God. Hallelujah. How many here want to have some self-control in your life? You got to walk in love. Now go to 1 John chapter 4. I got to be, yeah, okay, 1 John chapter 4. I'm trying to shorten my sermons just a little bit. Uh, you know, in, 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 uh, on Wednesday nights, I don't short, shorten anything because Wednesday night's more of a Bible teaching time. This is more of a, I don't know, an event, whatever it is. It's an event. And, uh, I, you know, this is a time where people get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Everybody say, love one another. Amen. Now, the word love there is agape. Remember I told you there's different kind of words. There's a word about romantic love. There's a word about friendship love. Peter kept using that. You know I'm your friend, Jesus. Jesus kept saying, do you agape me? He said, I'm, I know you. I'm not there yet, Jesus. Well, on the day of Pentecost, he got there. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Now, if you are born again, you know God and you love God on the inside. Right? The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Right, so that they, you know, you're, if you're trying to say you love God and you don't really love, love people, love others, love yourself, there's an issue there. Either you don't understand something, or you really didn't get it. And there's a thousand people around churches that sit in church and even go to church, and they never got anything except the lingo. They all all the lingo, you know. They even know the charismatic lingo. And you know that because in Matthew chapter 7, actually let's go over there. That's, that's another spot. I really like to dwell on that because it's an interesting um, scripture 
when you look at it in, in context. Um, and, I, and I used to think of it about it one way, but it's very interesting. In Matthew chapter 7, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, Whoa. verse 12. In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want to treat them to treat you. Isn't that good? For this is the law and the prophets. You want to be treated well, treat others well. Verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate. Now, what's he talking about here? Everybody say love. love. That's the subject. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many that, who enter it. You ever get around negative preachers? All the hell, the, the, the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. Everybody, there's very few people serving God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There's billions of people on this earth right now. Over 60% of them baptized with the Holy Ghost. All over the world. America is just one little tiny place. They're all over the place. If you go down to Panama, they start a church and they have 200 people in three weeks. It's just an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's been going on for years in Central America, places like that. But you see a lot of people are negative. So they take scriptures like this and they say, well, you know, it's a broad way. And most of the people are going down and they're going to go to hell. And there's very few, very few that are going to get to heaven. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the love walk. There's billions of Christians, very few of them walk in love. And that's why, my friend... There's so many issues like things like, and don't get condemned under, over this. I'm just going to point some out. Sickness, disease, poverty, unanswered prayer, depression, obsession, possession, oh, and other eschen. <laughs> There's all this stuff is not because we're not capable of living in victory. It's because we're not really walking in love. We, we live any way we want to during the week and expect God to come up on behind us. And we're not walking in love. We're, 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 we're going like this every time somebody passes us by and we're giving them the old <laughs> Yahoo and the, and the California salute and everything else. How many have ever done that? I have. Oh, you haven't. She's, she's never. <laughs> you know, but... We, we don't treat people. We go off. We're angry. We're, cutting, we're yelling at our wife. We're yelling at our husband. We're just going off. And, and the last thing we ever think about is love until you come to church and the pastor preaches on it. And then he tells you to love one another and doesn't tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. I, don't, I didn't eat too much garlic last night, did I? Yeah, okay. Because <clears throat> I ate a boatload. Of, I ate garlic like you wouldn't believe. It's good for you. There's healing properties. But you've got to understand something here. It is very important for us to understand that thousands of Christians out here have went down a broad path. You know them. I know them. Maybe you're one of them. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You can always change that, though. And there are many, you mean Christians go down the path of destruction? Let's keep reading in context what he's saying here. For the gate is small and the, the way is narrow that leads to life, and there's few that find it. Right. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravaging wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Yeah. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistle. Are they? Good point. So every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears b bad fruit. You walk in love, you're going you're to bear good fruit. We just talked about the fruits of the Spirit, right? right? A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Yeah. Every part of us that's not bearing good fruit, God wants to cut it off. Yeah, so then you'll know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? In thy name cast out demons? In thy name perform many miracles? Question mark. Now, I used to teach it like this. See, that's charismatic, so you've got to watch out. 
But the truth of the matter is, he's saying, people are saying they're having these experiences, like in church where people are talking about, we believe in these things, but you never see them or do them. Huh? Could it be that some of those people don't even know God? Well, apparently so, because he goes on and says, hey, depart from me, all you who work in iniquity. I don't even know you. You go to church on Sundays, you're out here doing all kinds of stuff at the bars and everything else. You never knew me. I never knew you. Who are you? But they got around church enough to know and start chalking the jargon. We cast out devils. See, we're going to have a sweatshirt like that. So we better back it up. So what's exciting about this church? I teach you how to do stuff, and you do it, and it's fun. You feel involved. Why do you feel involved? Because when you're doing something and actually doing what the Bible says, it's exciting in your spiritual life. Does that make sense to you? Every church in the world ought to be like that. We ought to be just like banging. Just for Jesus, just everywhere we go, we ought to have these testimonies. You got a prayer request. Give me your prayer request. Do you want it answered? Yes. I'll give it to the prayer team. They'll get it answered. We'll get it answered. If two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything we ask, it shall be done for them by our Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, said th- he said that if my word abides in you and you abide in me and my word abides in you, you'll ask what you will and it will be given unto you. Yeah. You don't hear any of this doubt and unbelief in the Bible. It's just made up by men. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. You never know what God's going to do because our, you know, God, he works mysterious ways his wonders to perform well it's not so mysterious when you start getting into the word cooperating with him you start thinking like him now none of us are God we're not going to think totally like God because God's bigger than you are nobody's as big as God except for maybe Stephanie but we start thinking like him we start looking at him you know, I used to sit there and read the scriptures. Anybody ever read the scriptures? I'd read the scriptures, and I would go over there to a passage of scripture, and I would always be blind Bartimaeus, or I'd always be the leper, or I'd always be put myself in the, in the, you know, the position of, of, of the guy I was getting ministered to. One day the Lord says, son, that's fine to do that. He said, when you're younger, but he says, I want you to start putting yourself in the place of me. Does that make sense? He said, <laughs> put yourself in the place of Jesus. Follow what he does. So you know how to do it. That's how I learned. Started putting myself in place. I meditated on that. You go up to the man of Gadara. You cast out devils. You get up to the person who has a withered arm. You pray for them this way, this way, this way is the way he prayed. This is what he did. I haven't spit yet, but I'm getting close. Today may be the day. <laughs> I tell you what, if you spit on somebody, you better get the results because t- today everybody's got a camera and it'll be on Facebook. He spit it on him and it didn't work. <laughs> I was thinking the other day maybe I should have a whip. <laughs> they had this guy and he was calling people up and he's whipping them. No. Yeah, in church. Oh my God. In Kenya, you know, they're crazy down there. A lot of these people are crazy. It's terrible. And they'll get you drinking, you know, we're going to prove we love God. Drink gasoline. You know, eat grass. They go out rah, 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 and start eating grass. Colts. Now that is weird stuff. There you go. You know. And so this guy's calling them up and whipping on them. Well, somebody filmed that and they took it to the police and they came and arrested him. I said, good. Put him away. Don't let him pastor no more. I wouldn't go. How many... You know, that's bad enough that the guy would do something like that. But who are the idiots that go to church there? If I tell you next week we're going to have a whipping service, you have a right to please leave because you're being run and go. Be gone. I don't blame you. If I get up here and I say, now next week we're really going to have some communion. We're going to take some fire water, you know, some gasoline. 
you know, drink it, and then we're going to put a torch up to our mouth to prove. No. no. I don't even like that snake twirling. You ever seen the snake twirlers? Up there in the Appalachia or something, they're handling them snakes. A lot of them guys die because they get bit. I thought, you know, that's the craziest thing ever. When I first got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and I saw that, I thought, that's just ridiculous that people would do something like that and think that that's okay and people would follow somebody like that. What in the world do you want to handle snakes for? They say, well, it proves you have faith. It doesn't prove you have faith. It proves you handle the snake. If you handle the snake the right way, most of the time they won't bite you. But every once in a while, if they got a bad mood, they'll turn around and nail you. And they don't care who you are. It's like a dog. Nice doggy. Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> and I, and, I, and I, get this, I got on television, and so I thought, you know what I'm going to do for my last television program this year? I'm going to give you a nice big, long rubber snake <laughs> and pull it out. I almost did it, but I resisted the temptation. <laughs> it's supposed to be funny, but I guess it wasn't. Amen. Everybody say, God is, love. God is love. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 1. I'll, I'll end today with this because we're running late already. And you guys got a lot to do. And I know you do. We're a busy bunch. Some, some of you got to go down and, and go to your restaurants. And some of you got to do fish boils. And some of you got to, you know, a lot of you guys, some of you guys got to watch a ball game. And, and some, and you know what? There's people in this room right now. Some of you have to make out T-shirts. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> in 1 John chapter 1, are you there? I love this scripture. How many here want to walk in love? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Hmm. Okay. You might have spoken too soon. Let's look down at verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. Everybody say, God is light. All right, now remember that. God is light, God is love, interchangeable, right? And in him there is no darkness at all, right? How many here know that God doesn't have any darkness? Raise your hands if you believe that. There's none. Not in none, he's good. All right, let me ask you another question. How many know you do have some? Yeah, you do, he don't. So when you get with him, that darkness will be exposed. This is the way he works to, to, to get us, um, to help us to, along to mature. Yeah. Right? Now, how many have ever got into God's presence and felt kind of bad at times? You really shouldn't. You learn not to do that. But there's times where you, you, you get into the holy presence of God and you feel just like unworthy. Yeah. Which you really shouldn't because you are worthy. Right. But nonetheless, he's holy and you're not. Does that make sense? Huh? All right. So that will cause you to change. When you're in his presence, you're reading the word of God, you're meditating the word of God, and you are in his presence, that, rub, that rubbing with him causes you to change. Can you say amen? Yeah. amen? That is because you are fellowshipping with God. Not You don't have a relationship with God. Yes, you fellowship with Him. Now, many Christians have a relationship with God. They are born again. They know God. They love God. But they don't have fellowship with God. What is fellowship? Fellowship is close. You know, a lot of Christians... And I'm going to keep on reading here because you need, you need to read it out of the Bible. Let's go to verse... Uh, Six. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. How many here got Christian friends? Not judging, but you just, when you look at them, you go, my God, it's hard to tell if they're really saved. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Lot, there's a lot of people out there like that. Right. They don't practice the truth because they don't have any fellowship with them. Yeah. They might have a relationship with him, but they don't have any fellowship with him. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in himself in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's two ways God does this. 
Number one, he does this thing to us when we're in his presence, fellowshipping with him, where all of a sudden we see something in the Bible or we see something about ourselves that's not pleasing to him. Have you ever experienced that? So what you do is you make your adjustment, right? You say, okay, I used to believe this, but I've been hoodwinked by something. I don't believe that anymore. I'm going to adjust my thinking on that. All right? That's called growing, mind renewal. But you know that happens alone with God. But it also happens, guess where? At church. Because church is much more than just a place you come down here and the pastor gets up and, and, and says some nice things to you and we, and we have a little worship service. Church is much more than that. And some Christians never, listen, they never have experienced church in their life. Right. Even though they go every week. Yep. All right. I'm going to this side of the room because they're much more active. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. You can sit in church for 20 years and never experience church. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, Pastor Tom? Because church is a place that's not just fun to go to and we enjoy the presence of God and we all shout and laugh and run around the building and roll on the floor and call ourselves holy rollers. It's a place where we rub each other the wrong way. Especially when you start working together. And God says, okay, the pastor has a vision. This is what he wants to do. And so let's make out some sweatshirts. Okay, so we work together on the sweatshirt thing. And we do this and we do that. And somewhere along the line when you're doing that, you're going to rub somebody the wrong way. Or you're going to get rubbed the wrong way. And so Heather ticks me off. She just ticks me off. So what am I going to do with that? Do I go to the Lord and say, Lord, you need to get that, Heather. Sick Heather, Lord, in Jesus' name. No. What I do is I say, the first thing I do is look inside. Why is Heather bothering me? What, what is it about Heather that just ticks me off? And the Lord will say to you, or he'll reveal to you, you, don't, you just, inside, you got things in your, inside that, that you need to change. You're wanting to point fingers at everybody else instead of allowing him to change us. See, the body, and if you never, if you don't, don't approach church that way, you've never been to church. A lot of people come to church, never do anything, never get involved. No condemnation to you if you're like that here, but I'm just saying, don't get involved, don't participate, don't do much of anything. Their whole life, they've never been to church. When you go to church and you're doing it the right way, people are going to tick you off. And you're going to find out you got some spots in you that need to be changed. Come on, everybody. And that rub causes us to go to the blood of Jesus and be cleansed from that particular attitude. Amen. This is, I told you, maybe you don't want to hear this. This hurts. I can remember sometimes crying about it. Because that guy ticked me off so bad. I had him at work. I had him at work, man. I had people at work that just made me mad. Yeah. Any work, any, anybody work a secular job? Yeah. You know that God works there too, doesn't he? Yeah. Same thing. How about your marriage? Oh, God, get off of that, Pastor Tom. <laughs> That's probably the number one deal. You get married, like people say, I, got, I found the one. Oof, I'm in love. I go, okay. We're going to get married. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. So you go down to do the, the wedding or the funeral. I mean the wedding. <laughs> and you know what happens? The mother-in-law and the father-in-law and the person over here and their mother-in-law, they're, they're getting a big old fight over things. And everybody's arguing and everything. I had one girl who was so stressed. She's in the back room and she passed out. And she didn't go out under the spirit either. She fell out. She was so stressed because of her parents were fighting with the other parents. The family were feuding. It's family feud, man. I'm telling you right now, you wonder. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, I've told a couple, hey, just go elope. You're, with your family, they're crazy. You're in a March hair. You just go, go elope. Here, I'll marry you in the office. Thank you. 
I always tell people, small wedding, long honeymoon. Man, I'm telling you, right. You know, uh, and, and because it is stressful when you get married. Oh, it's fine for the first three weeks. And after the honeymoon, normally during the honeymoon, you only have two blow-ups. But then all of a sudden, you know, this thing, real, reality starts taking place. Are you guys here? You're looking at your watches. Are you ready to go home? Okay, I'll let you go. You're going like this, you know. Huh? I'm going to stand here. See how much patience you got. You know, so it rubs you the wrong way. You work with somebody that just ticks you off. Their personality rubs you the wrong way for whatever reason. Now, I can get along with everybody. That's a true statement. Pastor Tom has developed his life to where every personality in here I actually can like. That's hard. <laughs> because before there have been people, because they're just, I don't have anything in common, whatever it is, I just didn't, you know, couldn't do it. But I understand people. I'm a people expert. It took me 45 years to get there. <laughs> See, so I understand how this works. So God brings together the perfect people. He brings the perfect people in that are just going to try you to the bone. <laughs> it's not always the case, but pretty much. Now, when you get married, he knows exactly what he's doing. If it's God. If it's God, your marriage will be tough. Because normally opposites attract. So you get married to this person, and all of a sudden, that prince turned into a toad. Or that princess turned into whatever, you know. Get off of that. You know what I'm talking about? It's just not reality. And these preachers, they get up and tell you, oh, I've been married for 42 years, and it's been bliss and wondrous, and oh, my God, the glory just rests in our house. You know what I like to do? I like to take a Bible and slap them right up the chops. Boom, you're lying like a dog. There's no such beast as that ever. Now, you might be making a positive confession, but you're on the, on the verge of lying about it. Cause. So that's, no, that's another thing, marriage. Yes. Marriage is the first sale of the church. It is. Yeah. You probably grow more in marriage than you do here. Yes. Right, Stephanie? Yes. All right. Well, Stephanie's an expert. <laughs> then there's the other thing. There's work. And then there's another thing. How many have ever had children? Ooh, all of a sudden you can't, you just can't get up and go to a movie. You just can't jump up and run off and, and eat at a restaurant. You got that. You're trying to get some sleep, man. And they get up at the worst times. I mean, you're deep. You're in this deep, deep sleep. You know, you're over there. You know how you get where you just, ah, drool's coming out. And all of a sudden you hear this, and it just shocks you out of sleep, and I hate that. It's like, oh, and then you say, well, I'm going to get some coffee. But then you drink the coffee, and it's worse because you can't go back to bed, and you're still tired. And about three days of that, you're walking around going, this is why God has you be young when you have babies. Me and my wife did a stupid thing. Our first grandchild, Sabella. Oh, wow. Come on, let's take her for a night. <laughs> How come you didn't stop me? <laughs> you guys should have. Yeah, like we took that little girl over there, that little baby. And I'm telling you what, I got no sleep. It, my, my nerves were on edge. I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Oh, my God, all night. Wah, wah. You know, grandparents have earned the right yes. to play with the baby and give it all up back to you and leave and go and let you do that stuff. Oh, I mean, it was horrifying. It was terrible. Yes. Amen. 
It's, it's human relationships are like that. We learn to get along. We learn to develop. We learn to be patient, even in the midst of these strenuous trials and tribulations. And, and if you don't think having a child's not a trial, talk to Kate. She's getting to be quite an expert over there. I, I go over to Kate's house. How you doing, Kate? Great. She's got, she's got the big old, this big old dude in her arms who's already this long. And she's got one on her foot and another one on the other foot. Yes. And she's walking around trying to, trying to cook something or vacuum the floor. That's amazing. I just sit there and I go, how do those women do that? That's absolutely incredible. She's got three of them. Probably going to have more. You know, Arthur and Kate might have 17 or 18 of them so. <laughs> See, that's, that keeps him going. He has to make money. And how, that's another thing. How many know if you have children, you've got to make money? In fact, if you have a wife, you've got to make money. I married Stella, nice little Stella. She's so sweet. You know, and I'll tell you what, let me tell you a secret about Stella. Her mother lives in Panama. That her, her mother used to live in Panama. That's a secret. So once you get ticked off at me, you know how you, most of you guys called your mother when things got hard? You shouldn't do that, but you did. Huh? She did it too for three hours <laughs> to Panama. So when I got the phone bill, it was more than my rent. Say, what'd you do, Pastor Tom? Took the phone off. <laughs> I'm talking about how crazy it was to be married to you. <laughs> She's going, I got a few stories to tell you. When I get my chance, you just watch what I'm going to say. And she could really work me over if she wanted to. But what I'm talking about is that's how you grow. And when you look back on all that, it's how you grow. I hate you. I, I, I want a divorce. People do that kind of thing. You shouldn't do that. But when you do, if you walk out of your house, you know, God starts dealing with you. And you have to go repent. You learn how to repent when you're married. <laughs> you repent a lot when you're married. Stand to your feet. I'm done. You guys getting something out of that service today? I did. Good service today. You need to understand that. Your job is more than your job. Your marriage is more than you think. In God's eyes, your, your job, your marriage, is a way he trains you. One of the ways. Hallelujah. Your church is more than just sitting there and listening. It is a place where your gifts and talents will come out. That's right. And when we start finding out about them, we want to use them. So we start putting them into practice. Just like these folks here, they do printing. I go, I've been, we've been talking about that for three years. Yes, it is. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He's just telling me to shut up. We've been talking about that for three years. Well, when all of a sudden I, I found out they did that, I go, there you go. Well, we have somebody that's going to do it for us. Thank you, honey. She's being real nice to me until yeah, I get home. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and, and, and you got gifts, all of you. I, Jackie, she's receiving offerings because we're training her gifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Stephanie, she's got gifts. She ends up ru running the politics up here. I go, bless her heart. That, she's going to have to have tremendous character to be around those people, those politicians. How many know politicians are, on both sides are crazy or no? Bag of hammers. Yeah. Join hands. Crazier than a bag of hammers, some of these people. By the way, vote. Still, I already voted. We voted. We vote absentee. That's different than mail-in. 
We can't mail in in Wisconsin. It's against the law now. You can't drop them in a box either. It's against the law now. Hallelujah. That's right. Well, Father, we just thank you today for the words that were spoken over us, for the healings and the deliverances and the things that we don't even know we have yet, but we will. We thank you, Father, for this congregation, for the love that's here and the joy. And Father, I just pray for every person in here that they go out of here changed by the power of God. And if there's anybody in here that really doesn't know you well, Lord, I pray that they'll just, in their heart, reach out to you right now and realize there's always more of you, because there is. And we thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs>